Hey nerdlings, it's Tom and Lacey with Do You Nerd? And you're watching Linda, aka The Gamer Girl. My girl. Hey everybody, Linda aka The Gamer Girl here and today I'm gonna talk about how I was broke and you all know the struggle going to college, trying to be a gamer, trying to get all the brand new games and still have food on the table. When I was going to college I had to find means to be able to still video game so what I would do is I first would go to my local game store, which was either GameStop or I went to Game Force, and I would pre-order and I would throw the minimum down and weekly I would go back or monthly depending on whenever my paycheck was at the time and I would put down five, ten dollars to be able to snag the video game so I wasn't paying sixty bucks up front and it wasn't hurting my pocket at the end of the day. And you're saying, well that's super easy and simple, but not very many people think about that. They automatically just go, oh, I forgot about that game. I would check regularly like when stuff was coming out and who had the exclusives and what was their best pre-order bonuses because not only were a lot of people giving out DLC at the time, most of them were giving out free little like t-shirts or trinkets when you pre-ordered a game. Now the next tip I always took was for those who don't know, your local library is the go-to place. If you go there, you're going to be able to find a bunch of video games. And most of them are snagged up, so you have to go into what they call a waiting list on their end. I don't remember what it's called. But I know um, on average you pay, depending on the video game, about five, ten dollars I got lucky and I found a couple libraries where as long as you went on the waiting list, you got it for free. I know in Florida, Nova was one of them. It was super, super cheap for the retro games. Now, the modern games, I will say you're going to probably have to pay about 5 bucks, $10 at the most. And that's how I would get my games. I would go on the bus or I would ask somebody to give me a ride, head over to the, my local library, would snag up a bunch of video games. And that right there saved me a pretty penny because I would have tons and tons of fun and if I really loved the game I'd pick it up and if it was a no-go for me I would just say okay <laughs> I didn't spend sixty dollars I only spent about five or less and they also have DVDs and Blu-rays so go to your local library sign up it's super simple all you have to do is just show your local residency and boom and please pay your late fees people now, this one is going to probably make a lot of collectors mad, but I understand where you're coming from, guys. There are certain games that I will not get rid of in my collection. You know where I'm going with this, guys. So basically, I would sell my old stuff to get my new games. I would sell video games, I would sell controllers, I would sell cables, cords. So one trick also that is a subtext to this, which is basically, I would sell cables that are readily available that would be considered for, you know, something else for a video game system. And it's a trick that I use, but you got to be careful with it because GameStop will start monitoring your trade-ins. You're only allowed so many trade-ins at GameStop. They don't tell you this, but after a while they start monitoring, seeing what's going on. And it's not like, oh, you can't you're, you're stealing it's no it's they only allow so many trades and after that they stop you for a little bit don't know why <laughs> it's part of their policy but for the longest time i would buy in bulk from ebay tons and tons of hdmi cords and tons and tons of like little micro sd card you know everything you can possibly think of and i buy them in bulk and i get them for about mm, maybe a dollar or less and then I go in and I would sell it to my local GameStop and I'll get a profit from that and if anything I would sell it to friends or people at the college at the time they would forget their cord their cable or whatever and I would hey here I paid 50 cents for this cable you want it for it and I wouldn't say that but I would be like you want it I, I'll give it to you for a dollar people had dollars ready because they were going to the vending machines to buy sodas they give me the dollars. So in turn, I would make about 50 cents to a dollar in profit from that. So take a look at 
Also, the clearance section for Walmart or any store that's going out of business, they have lots and lots of surplus stuff that they're just trying to get rid of and that you can sell it for a profit either at GameStop or another mom and pop shop. They don't care because they're selling it and they're like getting rid of it just to put in the next new item at Walmart. And that's your go-to because what they don't care about anymore, you can make a good decent amount of money off of it and go get yourself your game. So I hope that helps you. That's what I did when I was going through the struggles of ramen noodles and all that beautiful jazz when it was time for college. So if you have any other tips and tricks that you do because we all need help these days to keep on gaming everybody. Thank you for watching the video. If you're new, hope you hit the sub button. Catch you later everybody.